Joining me now, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California. And Congresswoman, um, I'd like your response to the news about Steve Bannon today, someone that you have been an outspoken uh, critic of. Uh, what do you make of the developments today that he's been removed from the Principals Committee of the National Security Council? Well, basically, I think it's a move uh, that only they know why they have done it. I don't trust anything they say. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that Bannon is still going to be close to the president. He'll be whispering in his ear whether or not he's sitting on the National Security Council or not. And so I don't believe that he's been removed uh, because somehow they don't want his input. And that excuse that he gave by being there to babysit and watch Flynn is flimsy. And it doesn't make good sense. So we can just throw out whatever it is the president has said. And it will show up later on uh, that we've been misled one more time. Yeah, uh, how do you, uh, you, um, you just said something that strikes me as important, uh, that you just don't believe anything coming out of the White House. And yes. uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily broadly applied across both parties, but I do think there is a credibility problem. How do you conduct yourself as a member of the United States Congress in interactions with that branch of government when you feel that you cannot literally trust anything they say? Well, um, we actually are having a very difficult time. If you take a look at the negotiations that went around um, the ACA and um, trying to figure out exactly where they were coming from uh, and what they were wanted to do on health care, all we know is that it was a circular firing squad inside the Republican uh, conference. Um, we're not able to do any more uh, with the president than they're able to do uh, within their own conference. Actually, very few people up here, I think, really believe him. Uh, he's not trusted. Uh, he doesn't really have the credibility. The Los Angeles Times uh, did a striking article on him. There's a four-part series that they're doing that basically talks about this lack of trust, this lack of confidence, and about his lying. And so uh, we, don't, we don't have that kind of relationship where we're really negotiating and we can believe or disbelieve him. We're just far apart. America has been involved in a ceaseless state of war since 2001. Uh, Afghanistan, in which we still have troops in harm's way, is the longest war in the history of the American Republic. Um, did you get nervous today watching the president talk about something as freighted, high stakes, and, and violent as the Middle East uh, when he was the language he was using today? Well, I get nervous anytime I hear the president talk about foreign affairs. I get nervous when he denies to shake the hand of one of our strongest allies. I get nervous when he tries to bluff uh, the president of China. I get nervous when uh, he basically um, does not know what he's talking about. You know, this is a president who didn't go to the briefings. He didn't have time to listen to uh, the experts talk about what is happening in the world and on foreign affairs. So I don't want him really speaking for the United States. You know, you heard something today about him taking a different attitude on Assad in Syria. Well, what is that? Is that American policy? Did he make it up on the spot? Does he know what he's talking about? No, he doesn't. And so I think it's a mistake uh, for us to believe that somehow he's going to ever be able uh, to engage in diplomacy that he's going to be able to work out ways that we can stay out of war. And so I have no trust and no confidence in him. And I really wish that there was some way we could rein him in. I wish that our foreign affairs experts could somehow get his ear and at least tell him to shut up, to just stop it. I want to ask you about something the president said today on the record in the Oval Office about uh, Bill O'Reilly, uh, an individual who uh, had said some uh, offensive things, uh, in my opinion, about you and, and sort of apologized for it, but then redoubled his attack on you. Uh, Mr. O'Reilly faces multiple allegations of sexual harassment, numerous settlements on that score, outstanding ones as well. The president saying this of, of Mr. O'Reilly, I think he's a person I know well, he's a good person. I think he shouldn't have settled. Personally, I think he shouldn't have settled because you should have taken it all the way. I don't think Bill did anything wrong. What do you make of that? Well, it's coming out of the mouth of a man who has said some horrible things about women. Don't forget he talked about grabbing women in their private parts and because he was important he could get away with it. And so they are two of a kind. And so I'm not surprised that he stood up and tried to defend Bill O'Reilly. But 
it's all catching up with Bill O'Reilly and that sexual harassment enterprise that they created over there at Fox. And it's catching up with them, and you have over 30 advertisers who have taken away their advertising. They are not wanting to do business with them anymore because of the way uh, that they have created this record of sexual harassment. They have treated women very badly. And so I understand the Justice Department has opened a case. They're taking a look at them because this really is a sexual mm -hmm. harassment enterprise. It shouldn't be in America that you can sexually harass women and then buy your way out of it because you're rich. If they continue to do this in the way that they have done, they need to go to jail. You know, the president's over there talking today about uh, Susan Rice going to jail. They need to go to oh. jail. Uh, Bill O'Reilly needs to go to jail. And so I just want you to know that the president didn't do himself any good standing up for Bill O'Reilly. And where was Ivanka? She's supposed to be his advisor. She's supposed to be the one that's standing up for women. Right. I think she either advised him wrong or she's absent and she's not in it. All right. Congresswoman uh, Maxine Waters, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.